that had been drugged to church nine months before they was ever born. Yeah, tell it. Inside of Sunday school, you'd have thought it'd been the one that knows the story of Noah and the ark and Moses and the bulrushes and Daniel in the den of the lions and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Jesus walking up and knows the books of the Bible can quote them frontwards, backwards and stand it upside down on their head. You'd have thought it'd been there. But what the emphasis of what Luke is saying here is no, 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 no. It's the, it's the one that was born on the other side of the tracks. This is the one the bus had to stop by and pick up because his parents went and bring him to church. He's the one that, he doesn't know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He knows Coolio. Or he knows Eminem. He knows Taylor Swift. He, he doesn't know Red Book. He doesn't, he doesn't know King James. He doesn't know that. But looky here, he's the one coming back. He's the one that says, says, Lord, thank you for what you've done. I'm looking at a bunch of Samaritans this morning. <laughs> Amen, I'm looking at a bunch of, hey, you got a Samaritan for a preacher. I wasn't raised in this atmosphere. I didn't know any of that. I did 15 years old, buddy. I didn't know John 3, 16. But here I am today, clothed and in my right mind. And I say, thanks be unto God. <laughs> thank God. Or what he's done for us. He's a Samaritan. He is an outcast from Jewish society. Viewed at a, as a compromiser at best. He was despised by the Jews. The only trait that brought him into the company of these other nine men was their common disease of leprosy. But it was this man who returned to the Lord to give God glory. The other men were bent on their rituals and their religion. They were too consumed with getting on with their lives, doing what they wanted to do. Think about it. I don't know how long they had been lepers, but a day would have been too long. A week would have been excruciating. A month would have been horrific. Men lived years and decades even like this. You imagine for all 10 men, if they had any families prior to contracting this disease, they couldn't wait to get back to society. There were plans, dreams, hopes, and goals. Man, we've got to get back. Let's go show ourselves to the priest. Let's go through the examination process. It's a lengthy process. We've got to get the ball rolling on this thing. Let's do it because I've got a wife and I've got, a, I've got some kids and I've got a, some parents. I've got, I've, got, I've got all this stuff I want to go do. I want to get back. I want to go eat a double cheeseburger again. I haven't been able to do that. I want to go to Disney World. I want, to, I want to go fishing. I want to go hunting. I want to, I want to go, hey, Black Friday shopping's coming up. I want, to, I want to hit the mall. I got to get this thing in. Yeah. That's where the rubber meets the road. Right there. Got all this stuff I've got to plan for. Listen now. I don't have time to go back to church Sunday night. I'm too busy. I don't have time to read my Bible tomorrow morning. I'm too busy. I've got too many Christmas presents to buy. You can't expect me to put that money in the plate when it passes by. No, 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 you, no, you, you got it wrong. I, I, no, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But I'm too busy in my life to postpone all of that and come back to him. Too busy. But the Bible says this Samaritan came back to Christ. The attention to this detail, I, I think, is, is offered by three separate questions asked by Christ inside of our text. We're almost done. Jesus has three questions. I, I, I like these. It shows, it shows really just, I, I think, almost from a human perspective, the utter surprise of Christ that nine other men would have been just as much a recipient of God's goodness in their life, and yet they wouldn't pledge their life to His glory Verse number 17, you'll, you'll see the first question. Jesus answering said, were there not 10 cleansed? Here's a sovereign Lord of heaven. And, and he's questioning. He says, wait, wait, a, wait a minute. Weren't there, weren't there 10? There weren't just one. Jesus is saying, I, I looked up there. There was, there was 10, right? Were, were there not 10 cleansed? Here's the next question also in verse number 17. But where are the nine? He says, first of all, wait, weren't there 10? Question mark. New, new, new sentence. Capitalization, right? Where are the nine at? Where's the, where's the other nine? There's a lot of emphasis in that. But the where 
is used at the end of the sentence in the Greek for, for emphasis. It, it, it would be arranged like this right here. But the nine, they're where? They're, they're going on to the rituals and their religion. They're, they're moving on with their life. The, the nine, they're where? They're, they're, still, they're still over there. You're, you're the only one. I did the same thing for all 10 of you and only one comes back to plunge his life. The other doesn't even appear as a question, but it is originally understood to be a question for us. Verse number 18, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. In other words, that would be seen as derogatory. The, I'm sure the ACLU and everybody would have a fit with that statement, right? And Jesus said, this foreigner, this stranger, he's, you're the only one. Abraham's children didn't come back. Moses' children didn't come back. None of, none of Daniel's offsprings here. You're the only one. They are not found. Where are they? There is a huge distinction that is made between this one man and the other nine. And the difference, listen to me, the difference seems to be exclusively rooted in this story. Because of one attribute, thankfulness. Amen. That is the difference in between the one that was made spiritually whole and the other nine that just took from God what they could get and kept going. Thankfulness. Now, let me show you some things that we can learn about this subject and we're done this morning. Number one, thankfulness is produced in salvation. Thankfulness is produced in in salvation. Listen closely to me. There is absolutely no way in this world that you can have your sins forgiven and your soul saved without becoming a thankful person. There's no way. There is no way. And this is told so many other ways throughout the gospel accounts. It's portrayed in the man that's forgiven a great debt and then he wouldn't even forgive a small debt. And the audacity there of, of, is, is, are you kidding me? You're forgiven so much and you can't even forgive. You can't become thankful enough in your life to, to, to revert that into someone else's life. Thankfulness is produced inside of salvation. Listen to it closely. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse number 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us. We often stop there and listen to the rest of that verse. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Huh. You mean Jesus went to the cross and he died not just for me, but he died for all 10 of those lepers? You mean Jesus went to the cross and he just didn't die for me, a white man, but he died for white women too? You mean Jesus went to the cross and he just didn't die for white people in general, but he died for black people too? And he died for Asians and Indians and he died for Canadians? Eh? Huh. <laughs> he died? Paul said, 2 Corinthians 5, 14, he died for all? Well, hold on. That means all were dead. That means all of us were lepers. All of us were in the same condition. And Jesus has afforded us all the same grace. But only one come back and took it. 1 John 4, verse number 19, John says it like this. We love him because he first loved us. To understand how I got put in this salvific relationship with God overwhelms me with joy, John says. And I'm going to continue to love him because of his abiding love in my life. Here's the second truth. Thankfulness has an understanding of grace. Thankfulness has an understanding of grace. Jesus becomes this one man's priority. Why? Because this one man recognized that he could not contribute to his own healing. This one man, this Samaritan, this stranger, if you will, he has an understanding in his life. And here's what he understands. And it's the same truth, really, that the other nine should have appreciated, but they didn't. These men should have, and this one man does appreciate the fact 
that if I could have cured myself, I would have already done that by now. But for the day, the week, the month, the year, the decade, however long it's been, I have been unable to improve my situation. In fact, my situation has steadily worsened, much like the woman with the issue of blood who spent all she had, but only grew rather worse, not better. Our situation, evil men and seducers don't get better. They get worse. People that are strayed from God don't get closer to God. They get further away from God. They don't seek after God. They don't understand. They go away. Every man does that which is right in his own eyes. We're prone to wonder. We're prone to walk away from the very God that has made us and given us the breath of life. We're all prone. We're all prone to do those kinds of things instead of our life. We can't afford. We can't afford to bring ourselves back into the right relationship. But Jesus paid it all. And all to him, I owe. There's an understanding of grace. He says, I could have never done this myself. Nor can I ever hope to pay this man back for doing this for me. But I tell you what I can do. I can thank him. I can take time out of my busy schedule and everything I hope to accomplish in my life to come back and fall down at his feet. Which, by the way, is indicative of the fact that this man understood that this was not just a man. That there was something divine about him. And he falls down to worship Christ. Number three, and I'm done. Thankfulness brings glory to God. Thankfulness brings glory to God. Look at the way it's worded. Verse number 15. And one of them, that's the Samaritan, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back with a loud voice. And he glorified God. Now, that might catch some of you... uh, that are intending on going to heaven dead in Christ and quiet by surprise. You can smile at me there. With a loud, uncomfortable, making everybody uneasy around them, he lifted his voice up real loud. And he said, Jesus! Hey, thank you, Jesus! Hey, Jesus! Hey, wait a minute! Hey, thank you! Thank you, Jesus! Hey, can you imagine if there's anybody else around? Can you imagine if anybody, I mean, they think that guy's a, well, he's a basket case, ain't he? And he's walking, he's like, Jesus, hey, hey, Jesus. And he gets over there and he falls down. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. He doesn't, hey, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'll write it down, you sign it if you think, if, you, if it's okay. Amen. Right? Amen. You're right? With a loud, let me ask you a question, because I feel like preaching now. When we get so ashamed of him, and when do we start caring so much what the brethren thought about us worshiping God in the first place? Huh? Let me tell you what. He said, well, I, I'm just not that, I'm not that kind of person. Well, that's funny. Naturally speaking, I want a kind of person that read my Bible either. Oh, yeah. It gets quiet when you preach against somebody's nature. When you preach against somebody embarrassing themselves in an attempt to worship God, it gets real peaked right there. Amen. Amen. I, by nature, I want a person to come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. By nature, I never really prayed, to be honest with you. I, I really didn't care what God thought. But then something happened in my life, and God showed me just how full of sin I really was. He showed me what he did to afford that salvation, and I come back to him 19 years ago, and I fell down at his feet, and for 19 years, I've been saying with a loud voice, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you. Hey. Now watch it. Verse number 18 is repeated. There are not found that returned to give glory to God. Save this stranger. He gives glory to God by his approach to Jesus, by his commitment to Jesus, by his being prostrate before Jesus. But ultimately, he gives him glory. Verse number 16, by giving him thanks. Thank you. It's more than a yard sign. It's more than a hashtag. It's more than a shirt. It's more than just an attachment to a title. It is a life and it is lip service that says unashamedly, I love you because you first loved me. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 15, the abundant grace, the more than enough grace, the all you'll ever need grace. 
the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. It's instinctive thankfulness for the child of God. Let's stand for prayer.